Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about rolling up streams of income and expenses and monthly versus annual cash flows. As always, all the information that I'm doing using this video, uh, you can download the Excel file at the web address you see on the screen, carrealestate.com slash free stuff. And of course, if you have questions, you can either post a comment on YouTube or you could email me at josh at carrealestate.com. Again, you can see that on the screen. So since video number eight, uh, got a couple questions having to do with rolling up the cash flows. If you remember, I was building my rent roll schedule on a monthly basis. There it is on a monthly basis. And I was building my cash flow screen, my cash flow page on an annual. And that makes it a little bit messy. Um, I then had to do various things with sums and be lookups and all kinds of fun stuff. So what I'd like to do to clean this up a bit is instead of having a cash flow that's annual and a rent roll that's monthly, I'm going to do everything monthly. I'm going to make my cash flow statement a monthly cash flow and then later I'll annualize it. Um, I kind of did it wrong in video eight because I was doing it the quick way. Uh, this is the, what I'm about to show you is the better way of doing it. But again, uh, I was doing it the quick way. So let's do it the better way and then just sort of go from there. Um, great. So let's get cracking. So first off, I'm going to call this cash flow annual. I'm going to insert a new worksheet, which I will call cash flow monthly. I'm going to have the same line items. Also, one other thing we didn't add from last time, uh, in the last uh, video we did free rent, but I never actually built in the free rent here. So we need to build in free rent also. So just as it shows here, potential rent, absorption and turnover, vacancy, free rent, I'm going to insert a line item for that because we're going to need that. And that's free rent. Cool. We'll do months one to, I guess, 72, because I believe we were doing uh, five years. Do, 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 do. Awesome. Okay. So now potential gross revenue, absorption turnover, free rent, less general vacancy gets us to EGR. EGR less OPEX gets us to NOI, principal interest gets us to cash flow after debt service. So uh, a little bit of easy formula stuff. Uh, NOI is going to be EGR minus OPEX. Cash flow after debt service is going to be NOI minus principal minus interest. Simple enough. Now we just got to fill in things. The PGR line is going to equal on the rent roll screen well, here's where it gets a little tricky. Let me go back to the rent roll screen. Here I was saying it was 20, as in $20 a foot, and then I was just simply multiplying that by 10,000 feet. So I'm going to have to make this a little bit uh, not as neat. I'm going to insert a few lines here. And whereas this was being shown on a monthly of 20s and you know adjustments against it, I'm going to have to turn this into dollar amounts. So we said here that the square footage was, as I remember, I think it was 10,000 feet. Actually, I can make that a link. Let me link that back up to the 10,000 feet. There she is. And now I'm going to show this in dollars. So again, I've got, let's add some space. I've got my values here. So in this case, it's going to be that number times this number, fix it with some dollar signs, divide by 12, that's going to be the monthly amount, and I'm just going to copy that down, right? And then this is just going to be the sum of these three cells. <clears throat> I'll just insert an extra line here. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to. I've got months up here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag this over. Drag, 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 drag. I might have to play with the spacing a little bit. Play with the spacing. It's 
So as you can see, it's 16 a month. And then at some point in the future, it rolls to 19. And we adjust it by negative 19. That was the vacancy. And there's the free rent. That's a partial month free rent because, again, uh, you know, it's a weighted average calculation. We talked about that previously. So now my cash flow monthly is going to be linked to PGR. I'm going to copy that down. So that's going to be absorption and turnover, free rent. I'm going to take those cells and drag that all the way across. There it is. And you can see in month. Actually, you know what I'll do? Let me just make this, uh, just remove the pennies, because I, I don't think we need the pennies. That's a little much. So as you can see, it's 16, 19, negative 19, negative 19, negative 19. For vacancy, previously, we just said the vacancy was some percentage. It's going to be the same math, basically. We're going to say, take what the PGR is, multiply that by the vacancy rate, subtract out the absorption and turnover. Uh, if that's greater than zero, put in a zero. And if not, do the vacancy the way you expect it. It's pretty much the exact same math. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to dump it into the cell. And I'm going to play with it. So again, it's saying take the PGR, multiply that by assumptions D11. If that's greater than zero, then zero. If not, so on and so forth. So as you can see, that works out to be a 10% adjustment. I'll drag that across. It's the same formula. And as you can see, it's doing, and I also let me get rid of the pennies here because pennies are annoying. It's doing 10%, 10%, 10%, but in this month, it does not do an adjustment because that's your absorption and turnover and that's your general vacancy. But here, it is there because, again, it's occupied, there's free rent, uh, so you're not collecting anything, and also there's a vacancy factor. Uh, that's the way it would work. Um, again, that's a little bit weird because you end up with a negative cash flow for that period, but that's okay. The math is still correct. Now I can sum this up. By the way, one way we know it's correct is uh, in the annual, we previously had it as 200,000 less 20 was 180. And here again, 15 times 12, well, that's 180. OPEX, if I look at my operating expenses screen, this was all being done on a monthly basis. So this is a little bit annoying. Um, I could either take the annual and divide by 12, or I could convert this whole thing over to monthly. I'm going to convert this whole thing over to monthly just because it's easier that way, I think. So again, I'm just going to do monthly, or months, I should say. And I'm going to put in one, two, three. You get the idea. Let me drag that over to month 72. Month 72. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically look at the year I'm in, and then based on the year I'm in, I'm going to pull down that value and divide by 12. So there are a few ways to do this. And again, you know, there are always a few ways to do this, right? So I could say this is a year. And in this case, I'll do that it's the first year because that's what it is. And I'm going to do that over to, say, month 12. So there it is to month 12. And then I'll do this plus that plus 1. So that's going to be a 2. And I'll drag that across. And that'll be 2s up until 24, and then 3s until 36. And we should see up until month 72, it's a bunch of 6s. That works as you'd expect. And now what I'm going to do for these, again, it's 10 lines. We wanted 10 lines of flexibility. So I'll do 
taxes and bring that down a few times. So, you know, this is expense 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'll do the sum function there. So we're going to need that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do an H lookup. I'm going to say, look for the year I'm in, in this table array. And actually, I'll make it, sorry, this table array. Then, if you find the year in that table array, how far do you go down? And in this case, I will go down to line two, right? Because it's going to the second line, which is where taxes are. And I'll throw in a false because I want an exact match. And I'll divide by 12. I will also fix the area, the table array it's looking at. And for here, I'm going to fix the row, but not the column. That's going to give me 5,000. And then it's going to give me 5,100. And then it's going to give me, in month 25, 5,202. You get the idea. Now, that works just fine all the way out. And again, I can you know do the dollar sign thing because it's annoying to have it be formatted in a weird way. The one problem here is, of course, it's taking the 60, dividing by 12, it's going to the second row, but I want to make this flexible. I want to be able to drag this down. So instead of going to row 2, maybe I want to go to row 3, maybe I want to go to row 4, and as I drag this down, I want to have it match just on not just on one column, one direction, but on multiple directions. Uh, that is to say, don't just go to the second row, but go to the row whose name is real estate taxes. Um, I'm going to do that in the next video, because again, we're at about 12 minutes, and I find that doing this in about 10 to 15 mi minute increments seems to work. Uh, as I said, if you're interested in more content like this, or if you have any suggestions for additional content, please contact me at my email address or post something on YouTube. And if you'd like to attend one of my, my live classes, I run them every six to eight weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. I also deliver classes on-site for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about it on my website at kahrrealestate.com. Thanks again, and keep on building better models.